Okay, can you guys hear me now? I'm gonna get a shout out if you can hear me. All right, excellent. Okay, so sorry about that. Uh, so let's go back to um, what we were doing on uh, Friday. So let me see inside the project. So what I did was I took uh, the code. Well, here, let me go to Canvas real quick. I took the code that um, what we wrote on Friday and uh, saved a copy of it as version 1. Uh, and then I made a copy of it called version 2, and the version 2 is what we're going to edit today. So uh, the reason I did that is so that you can kind of look back and see the evolution of the project um, in terms of the code in addition to looking at the video. So we're editing the version 2, and as we continue to edit this, um, then we'll, uh, we'll keep... Uh, uh, making new versions. All right, so let's uh, recap what the idea was, right? So we uh, we were using the Washington Post article. Uh, let me just load that up. Uh, uh, this guy as our inspiration. Uh, and so we had uh, basically this animation that we wanted to kind of mimic uh, right there. So... Um, Right, so the idea was we have, we start with an initial one infected person and a bunch of uninfected people, and then they kind of bounce around, and people get sick, people recover, and uh, then once they've recovered, obviously they can't transmit the virus anymore. Um, oops. So, uh, so here was our version of it. We start with a bunch of uh, safe people that are in blue, and then we start to get pink uh, to indicate recovered, but we had a couple of bugs, namely we had this kind of crazy bouncing thing going on, and uh, so we need to fix that. Um, and we also don't have quite all the bouncing working as it should, so we've got a few things to fix. Uh, okay, so let's start with the weird bouncing error. And um, the reason that that's happening is, so if we look at, uh, this, we've only actually programmed things to bounce uh, if they are touching the orange color, not if they're touching pink or blue. Um, and the other thing that we've got is the if we touch the orange, then uh, we change state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this if condition off. And I'm going to add an AND condition right there. So I'm going to say, if the state is 0 AND we are touching, um, touching the orange color, then that means that we're touching somebody infected, and we should change our state. OK, so then for this, I need to pick the orange color, and the orange color is not on the screen. So let me run. Okay, so there's the orange color. So I touch that, touch the little color picker, and I can pick and make sure I've got the correct orange color. Okay, so that will, um, all that did was kind of move where we check if we're touching an orange guy. But then what we're going to do is for uh, the bouncing part of our code, uh, we should bounce when we touch any of the um, uh, the colors. And so for that, we'll go to operators, and we're going to need two ORs, and we'll have to kind of nest them like that. And we could have it, we want to bounce if you're touching orange, or if you're touching blue, or if you're touching pink. Okay, so um, the... Um, Right, so if we're touching blue, let me run this so I can get the blue color. Oh, if I can get it, this is a little annoying. Um, okay, so I'm actually going to cheat and um, let me make a, a temporary copy of the sprite. Um, oops, that's not what I want. Let me go back. Let me. Um, let me duplicate the orange sprite here, infected ball 2, and I'll just put 
one there in the center and then uh, I'm going to change his costume to the pink um, and then I'll change it to the blue and that way I can pick under this guy I can pick the pink color and then I'll change this costume to the blue so that back here I can pick the blue color okay so that gets me all the things and then I don't need the infected ball number two and so I'll delete that and uh, yeah okay so now we need to put that right there in our touching thingy um, okay so what's uh, what's the problem here um, Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, all right. So that all that did was made it so that the blue ball should bounce whenever it touches anything. And then we need to make the same little change over here to uh, the orange ball is um, if the ball... Uh, so let's actually take this little snippet here, and I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to take this guy and transfer him to the infected, and then delete that little block of code. And then we'll come over here, and we'll do kind of the same sort of thing, that if the orange guy, we don't need to switch costume because it already is infected, so if it's touching anything, it needs to also bounce. Okay, so let's run this and see how it works. Okay, so now all the blue guys are bouncing and we still have kind of the stuck problem. Um, and okay, so that was a bit of a disaster. Um, so, uh, Let's see what we can do to fix that. Um, all right, so let's run it again and kind of see. So we're still kind of getting stuck stuckness happened happening. And uh, let's see, so we can fix that by um, let's um, let's maybe instead of changing the ball direction by 180, why don't we change it by 180 plus a random number and that hopefully will get us a little bit of variation um, rather than doing the physics so let's say 180 uh, plus a random number from minus 30 to 30 say all right let's see how that works Okay, so a little bit better. Okay, not perfect. Uh, but what kind of behavior are we getting? We should be expecting that eventually um, all of the... Um, we also have an infected ball here. The original infected ball isn't recovering. Okay, so we need to take... Um, so this original infected ball here uh, should have turned pink after five seconds. It didn't. Um, and so what we need to do there is on the infected ball, um, we just need to say... Um, let's see. Control if... And since the infected ball, um, the infected ball starts being infected at time zero. So we all we have to do for that is say, is the timer's value greater than five? Okay, and if so, then the original infected should uh, become uninfected. So we should switch the costume to ball, what was it, uh, pink is ball C. Okay, so then we just need to put that um, here. 
and uh, get rid of that there. Okay, so now the original ball should uh, recover after five seconds, um, like the the other ones. Okay, so now it's pink, and but it didn't look like it uh, infected anybody. Um, so let's try that again. Oh, I see. Uh, so on our infected ball, what we have to do is we have to initially make sure that the costume is in the infected state, which was ball A. So what happens is if you switch the costume to ball C, then when the program restarts, uh, it's still set on ball C. Okay, so let's try that again. There we go. Now we get some infections going. And some recoveries. And, um, oh, one other thing we forgot. So under the infected ball, what happens when we switch to costume C, that means that we've recovered. And so we should change the variable uh, infected by minus one and change the variable uh, recovered by one and okay so let's run that again oh okay so now we have a nice little problem um, is that um, the uh, the infected ball um, keeps this timer is still greater than or equal to five every single time. So what we need to do for there is to create a state variable, kind of like we did with the original ball. All right, so I'm going to make a variable called state. And then we need to initially set state to zero, which we'll call infected, um, which I think is what we had uh, no, we called state one infected. So we'll say state one. So if the um, if the timer is greater than five and the state equals one, then uh, we need to change that and then also set the state to state two, which is what we called for recovery. Okay, so this will keep basically the infected number from continually subtracting and ending up with a negative number inf of infected, which of course doesn't make any sense. All right, so let's rerun it and see if this works. Okay, so we still got kind of the bouncing issue going on, which is, uh, uh, I'll have to mess with how to fix that. But eventually, we end up with zero infected, 12 susceptible, nine recovered, and there's no more transmission. Um, okay, and now let's go back over to the ball where we created the clones of everything. So here we had 20 people. Let's, oops, maybe not 500. Let's crank that up to 50 and see what happens. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change, I'm going to hide the state variable, I'm going to hide the infected time, and I'm under sensing, I'm going to hide the timer, and then under the infected ball, I'm going to hide the state, and that just makes the uh, screen a little bit easier to read. Um, so the variables still exist, but if you uh, click the check mark, you either make them invisible or not but uh, they're still there obviously okay so let's run this again and see what we got okay so this is a little bit ridiculous because of the uh, bouncing problem um, uh, but we kind of get the idea Okay, so um, any questions on what we've got up until this point?
So give me uh, audio in the Discord if you've got a question or text in the chat. Uh, would speeding it up make it work a little bit better? So what do you mean by speeding it up? Speeding up the um, the ball speed here? Yeah, well, we can try that. Uh, so let's see what happens if we change this to 0 to 10. Okay, that's a little bit ridiculous, but... <laughs> Okay, so what happens here? Uh, we sped up the speeds so that they're anywhere from 1 to 10. Uh, the bouncing is, we still got a little bit of the bugs going on with the bouncing. In fact, actually, I think it might work if we slow everything down. Oops. And here, I need to also do that. Uh, still have a little bit of the... Uh, um, All right, so why does the yellow ball only affect the blue balls some, but not all of the time? Um, I don't think I saw it uh, not affecting the blue balls. Um, well, actually, okay, there is one reason that that could have been happening, which is, um, so what we have here, uh, we have basically two pieces of code that are trying to run simultaneously. Namely, the, uh, the blue uh, balls are checking to see if they're touching something else, and simultaneously, the infected ball is checking to see if it touches something else. So it can be the case that, um, say for example, if this part of the code runs first, uh, then the one of the balls changes direction and is no longer touching the other one. So when the other one goes to say, hey, am I touching? The answer is no. And um, um, it, uh, it never actually uh, runs the, uh, the part here about changing the color. Uh, so that sometimes... Uh, can be an issue. Uh, let me change the number of balls back down to say something like 20 so that we can kind of see a little bit more clearly what's going on um, and see if that's a problem. Yeah, we still have the stuck problem going on, but um, so it looks like it's okay. Well, we can change, let's change this to a bigger range of numbers. See if maybe that helps with our sticking issue. A little bit. Oh, no, I see what you mean. Right there we had a bounce against that blue ball that didn't change. Okay, and of course now that they're all either blue or pink, uh, we won't get um, we won't get anything uh, happening. So, okay, um, so yeah, so we've got a couple problems here. One is still the bouncing issue, uh, which there's we can you know think about a better way to do that. Uh, the other thing that um, we could uh, we could add, and this is something that if we go back to the Washington Post article that we were looking at. Um, so they add in quarantining, uh, which in this particular uh, animation here, they have sort of a quarantine that then they let out over time. And then sort of what happens is the infection sort of moves from the quarantine side out into the other side, and you still end up with a uh, widespread infection. Um, but, uh, but it just sort of happens more slowly. Um, then uh, what we had here would be the case where some of the balls were not allowed to move. Uh, so this is the idea of 
maybe a way to model social distancing. Um, right now, we had all of our uh, balls moving around, so we could add in the uh, the possibility that the ball could have speed zero. Um, right now, we only had it from one to something. Um, and um, the um, uh, then this is sort of extreme social distancing. Uh, so we could uh, we could run those. Uh, so let's go back over here and let's change the ball speeds to say zero to two. Now the infected ball I'm going to leave at speed one to something because if the infected thing isn't moving at first, uh, then we probably won't see much in the way of infection. Okay, so here I've got a um, little bit of social distancing or limited movement and the the infection uh, dies out. Um, all right, so a town. All right, you think that the infected ball is the only one that can change the other balls? So let's see if that's the case. So the other ball bounces if it touches anything. Okay, so that's normal. And um, oh, one thing I think we could do. Let's take let's take this. Oops. Let's take that and give it to the infected ball. Um, where did the code go? Okay, it didn't copy correctly. I was going to take this. Oh, there it is. And give that to the infected ball. Uh, so I've got a scroll here. And put that... Um, here. Okay, so we didn't have the randomization on the infected ball. Um, and let me put that back here. Um, so the infected ball, uh, so the original infected ball doesn't actually change anybody but itself. Okay, it will bounce if it touches anything, and it will uh, change to recovered if it's after five seconds, uh, but otherwise it um, it doesn't change anybody. So the individual, the the regular balls, the ones that are cloned, they change only when one of two things happens: either when they're touching an orange object, which means they're touching somebody infected, or uh, if they are already infected, then they can become recovered after five seconds. All right, so let's run this and see how we do. Um, and I'm going to speed up the um, speed up the range of things so that we can have a little bit more action. Okay, we've still got the bouncing issue. Okay, so in this case, basically no transmissions occurred. Okay, and now we're getting a decent number of transmissions. Okay. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> all right, so that works okay. The bouncing issue still kind of sucks, and I'll, I'll come up with a good physics way to, uh, to make that work better. Um, so what other things could we add to this to make it maybe a little bit more realistic? Any uh, brilliant ideas? Uh, population density. So what do you mean by that, Filippo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
so, well, all I could do there is, yeah, is just change the number of balls. Yeah, so we could just change the number of balls to be, you know, 50 instead of a 20. And um, maybe not surprisingly, we see that the transmission speeds up the more people you've got. All right, uh, flip them. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, no, that's good. Uh, that's a very simple change, right, to change this variable here. But what else do we know about this virus? Um, so right now, everybody gets over it. Yeah, so we we don't have any sort of death um, mechanic figured in here. So it could be the case that uh, that an infected ball dies, right? So let's go to our infected ball and let's um, um, add in some sort of um, uh, mechanic for death. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a variable called dead, okay, and then in my backdrop code, I'm going to set the initial value of dead to zero, and then let's add, um, let's think of state three as being dead, and um, so if we go back to the infected ball, well, we need to know what is the mortality rate for this virus, um, and that kind of depends on a bunch of things. Um, it partly depends on what country you're in in terms of how good the um, uh, health care that you have access to is. Um, uh, and also, like, if the hospitals are overloaded, so like, uh, say, in Italy right now, uh, there are too many patients and not enough ventilators, and so some of them are dying. Okay, so yeah, so there's different age groups that have different mortality rates. Um, let's just assume sort of an average mortality rate and um, um, just sort of say that it's 5%. Okay, and I'm just going to make up a number for the sake of demonstration. Okay, so let's say that um, the, the mortality rate is 5%. Okay, so I'm going to make a variable here, and I'm going to call it mortality rate, and I'm going to set it initially to be, and sorry, my dog's going nuts out, out there in the living room. I'm going to set it to be 5, and I'm thinking of this as a percentage. Okay, and then for the infected ball, I need to have um, basically something that kills it. All right, and so the code that I would need to, uh, to kill it is, well, first off, I need an if condition. And the second thing is, well, how do I know that I might die? I might die if I am currently infected, okay, which was the state variable. Infected, we said, was state 1. Okay, so under, um, let's see, operators, I need the equals. So if the state is equal to 1, uh, that means that we are currently infected. Okay, now we need to sort of roll a dice to see if we should die. So let's say that I pick a random number from 1 to 100, and if that random number is less than the mortality rate, okay, so random number less than mortality rate. So what this would mean is if I roll a 1, 2, 3, 4, or, um, well, actually, I should say 0 to 100 here. If I roll a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, then that means I die, and otherwise I survive. Um, and we don't know when the death occurs. It could kind of happen at any time. And so we need to say, all right, one of these two things, when both of them are true, if both of them are true, then we need to kill the, uh, the infected object. 
And the way that we'll do that is we will um, we will make the thing stop moving. Okay, we will um, take one away from infected because we are we just died, and we will add uh, one to our dead pile. Okay, and then this is the other thing that I need to do is I need to make the thing disappear. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the object, and because we've got all this stuff that's checking the color, I'm also going to just for um, for uh, safety's sake change the costume to ball E, which is the purple, uh, which is not one of the colors that we have um, in our list. So we'll change it to uh, purple. Actually, you know what? We won't even let's not hide it. Let's uh, just switch it to purple, um, and then under the purple one, let me do the same thing and kind of fill, um, uh, let's see, let me fill the uh, purple there, um, and uh, that way it'll look really obvious where we have a dead ball. Um, okay, so, so let's run that and see what happens. Okay, so what happened was, it uh, looks like the thing died. Um, oh, yeah, okay. So what happened was that the, um, oh, sorry, the other thing we need to do is we need to set the state. Um, to three, which is going to indicate uh, dead. And that way we won't keep killing a thing that's already dead. Okay, so what happens there is um, I think our mortality rate is a little bit too high. So why don't we, uh, why don't we say that it's a one. Okay, and... Um, so let's run that. So um, what I changed there by making it a one. So this is something where we'd have to be a little, um, a little bit careful. So when we had the mortality rate set to five percent, what that meant was basically at every moment, the infected balls had a five percent chance of dying. Um, which is not really realistic. If you've got a disease, you might have a 5% chance of dying over the course of that disease, but it's not like every waking moment of your life, you have a 5% chance of dying right then. Um, so the instant sort of mortality rate uh, is the way we've sort of programmed this in. Um, now, the other thing that we haven't done is right now, the only person who can die is the original ball. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take this chunk of code that we've written, this stuff here, and let's copy that over to the blue ball and find wherever the code went. Um, that looks like it didn't copy correctly, so let's try that again. Oh, that's why we copied it to the same object. Okay, that's very annoying that it's not copying correctly. All right, let's try that one more time. Duplicate. I'm going to put this down in the backpack. And then I'm going to come over here and add that. Oops, okay, so I've messed that up. Uh, that's the clone creation, and then this stuff needs to go down um, here, right there. 
Okay, so now this means that we've taken the death code from our original infected ball and added it to um, all the other ones. So now anybody that's infected can die. All right, so let's let this run a little bit. Okay, so we've got a bunch of death and Okay, and now there's nothing, uh, nobody infected, and we only have susceptible and recovery, but we've got uh, 25 out of our, uh, how many balls did we have in here in the beginning? Where did we put that? 50? So we had a 50% total mortality rate um, from this disease. Um, okay, so... Um, yeah, so we've added in the death rate, um, and we can certainly complicate that because as, um, as we've sort of talked about, different age groups uh, have different mortality rates with this. So uh, we know that, for example, people that are, say, over 60 are more likely to die from the virus than people who are uh, under 60. Uh, so we could put in basically like a, an age and have like a randomized age for each one of the different, um, the different balls. Um, and, um, you know, so that would, that would certainly work. Um, now one other thing I'm going to show you guys, uh, here is right now we've got the switching to costume, uh, so that we see, the purple balls basically visually showing us where the dead objects were. But what we could do is we could actually delete the clones. So under events, or sorry, control, I'm going to say switch the costume and then delete this clone. And what that means is that when an object dies, it literally will get deleted from our uh, from our um, sort of window. All right, so now if we run it, watch what happens as, um, oh, we don't have any infected. All right, let's start over. Oh, he died. Okay, he died before he infected anybody. Okay, so now we got some infection going on. So the initial infected guy will stay purple, but notice that as the other ones are infected as they die they just disappear okay and so now there are fewer balls on the uh, on the screen than when we started and we now are to the point where we have eight recovered people and 21 people that never caught the virus but there's no more infected people and so everybody's everybody's um, good uh, and then uh, the original infected ball, we can't delete him because he's not a clone. Uh, but what we could do is, uh, under looks, we can just uh, hide that object. Oops, that was weird. Uh, okay, I think that's why we were getting weird stuff with copying. Okay, we could hide it. And so now the original one when he dies is gonna okay so our uh, mortality rate here is maybe a little bit too strong um, okay so there's a couple other things that we could add to this um, which is um, one of the other things we know about this virus is that you can have the virus and not have any symptoms of it. So we could add, for example, um, two different states, one for that you're infected but you aren't showing symptoms, and one for that you're infected but you are showing symptoms. Uh, and for example, in our costumes, we could use this green one. Um, oops, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to do sort of a green color. So we could use the green color to indicate um, that uh, a different type of infection, so infection with symptoms or infection without symptoms. 
Uh, the other thing we could do, and this would be a little bit more complicated, is we could put like kind of a wall down the uh, down the um, our our window, and uh, so let's say for example, let me get um, there's a couple of the sprites that come with it that work really well as sort of like a wall. So like for example, this line, it's just a big red line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and I'm going to switch it to direction zero and that'll make it vertical. And then um, under our balls, the infected ball, um, under here where we go to a random position. Um, well, so let's take this red line. His X coordinate is 178, and you can see what the X and the Y coordinates are there. So we could say, all right, if you're the infected ball and the position um, of the infected ball, Okay, so that's under motion, uh, the X position. So if the X position is, what did we say it was there, 178? So if the X position is bigger than 178, or actually let's maybe say 175, um, then that means that you're to the right of the red bar and so let's say uh, oh wait sorry we want X position is less than not greater than we want the all the balls to stay on the um, the left of the red uh, bar Okay, so for example, there, um, the original orange one, if its X position is bigger than 175, it means it's to the right here, so we want it to, or I'm sorry, I wanted less than there, I'm sorry guys. Uh, so less than 175 and then we'll put that there. So what this little piece will do is it will repeatedly randomize the position of the infected ball so that it's to the left of the red bar. Okay, and we can take that little piece of code and let's add that here. Um, motion X position less than 175 and we need a loop repeat until okay so this will mean that initially oh that's interesting um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there um, huh that's interesting. Hmm. Um, here, why don't we do this? Why don't we have, why don't we do this? Oh, no, let's do that. Uh, let's try that. No, well, that's not going to work. Um, oh, I know. Why don't we duplicate this? There we go. Okay, so what that will do is it'll make sure that initially everybody starts out to the, uh, to the left of the... Um, the red line and then the other thing we could do is under our bounce code uh, so right now we've got the the bounce code for each of these things we could say if you're touching red 
then uh, also bounce. Okay, so let's add that in. So I need another or. And so we need to do all of this or. Oops. Okay, and so under sensing, we need to say touching uh, the red color. Okay, so if any of those things are true, then um, bounce. Uh, and then similarly, let's make the same addition here to uh, the bounce code for the original infected guy. Oops. Okay, there we go. All right, so under sensing, uh, if touching red, um, okay. All right, so let's see how that works. Okay, so this is a little bit, uh, ghetto because they're starting to bunch up against the wall but um, you know we get the idea here um, so then what we could do here is um, we could say um, yeah and then there's gonna be some funkiness going on with the bouncing uh, we could say all right if you've got somebody who's sick um, take him or symptomatic uh, put him on the red side so the other side of the red wall and that would be kind of like quarantining somebody in a hospital. Um, so for uh, so under our ball, we could say, uh, you know, if you were infected, then um, sort of move over here to the um, to the right of the red red wall um, as kind of like a like I said like a quarantine or something. Um, okay, so. Um, that's probably good for right now, just in terms of uh, getting the idea here, uh, but of sort of how we built up all this code. And it's a little complicated, but again, you know, the whole point here is to go through uh, step by step and uh, kind of think things through as you're coding. Um, okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk about just briefly before we quit is... Uh, the project. So, uh, let me load the specifications here, um, and let me full screen it. That'll make it a little bit easier to read. Uh, okay, so uh, the first thing you guys have already done is to make a Scratch account, um, and um, what you're going to do is to have a... Um, make sort of a short studio intro animation. Um, and I've linked to a couple of examples from say movie or um, video game sort of intro animations just to kind of get your creative juices flowing. But um, here are the uh, five components that you need to have. Uh, you need to have some sort of logo, which you can create. Uh, and you can create that using uh, the sprites that are available within Scratch or you can make your own. Um, so if, for example, you want to use letters, then you can use the built-in letters and kind of arrange them to make a logo. Um, something needs to be moving uh, during the animation, otherwise it's not an animation. Uh, you need to have some sound effect or music. Um, and uh, when the animation is complete, you need to fade to a solid color. Uh, next time I'll show you guys a really nice trick for how to do fading to a color. Um, it's a little, it, it's completely backwards from what you would think, but it'll work really nicely. Um, and then uh, don't make it too long or too short. I'm not going to define what I mean by too long or too short because I don't want to stifle some creativity here. But, um, you know, make it look nice. Make it not, you know, five minutes long. It should be something kind of short. Um and then, uh, so then I'll, I've got a pretty simple rubric. Uh, there's 50 points, 
10 for each of the four required things and then 10 points to make it look cool. And what you guys will do when you submit this onto Canvas is uh, you will submit a website URL. So all you have to do is copy and paste in a website URL uh, like this. And um, now here's the thing though. Uh, if you copy and give me your website URL and I load it and I see this, that means that you didn't share the project. Okay, so you have to have it, the project has to say shared right here. And if it doesn't, then that means that I can't see it. And if I can't see it, then it's a little bit difficult for me to grade um, uh, to take a look at your projects and stuff. Okay, now, if you do not see, when you're making a project, you do not see a share or shared button, uh, that means you have not verified your email address. So check your email because you should get an automated thing from scratch saying to verify your email. And uh, once you do that, then you should see the shared button here. Uh, okay, so that's all for today. Uh, any questions, comments, rants, raves, issues, problems? Yes, exactly. As Devin said in the, uh, uh, the Twitch chat, very sad panda if no share. Makes me a very sad panda. Um, okay, so uh, those of you, the prospective students, uh, if you want to maybe hang around for a few minutes uh, and join the prospective students audio chat channel, uh, I'll stick around and uh, uh, we can talk for a few minutes about, about the class or any questions you guys have. Uh, anybody else, if you have questions, just uh, hit me up in the CS101 audio channel or the office channel or one of those um, and I'm happy to, to chat. Uh, so I'll go ahead and end the stream here now. And so hit me up on Discord if you guys have questions, comments, rants, raves, etc. See you later.